Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. Welcome to another one of my Geometrica tutorials. This is tutorial number two. It's going to be showing you how to use the Polar tool, which is up here in the repeat effects. It's a cool little tool. It allows you to do a kind of more geometric based mandala design, I guess. Um, I'm going to show you how to do something along the lines of this today. So if you want to open Geometrica and you want to open a new document, just portrait A4 will be fine. So the first thing that we're going to do is if you come over here to the fourth little icon, that'll be your rotation effect. You want to enable this and then I'm going to select 12 mirrors, 12 rotations. You also want to make sure that your mirror option is switched on as well. So this is your basic mandala tool. Um, let me just select a pen tool here. Yeah, this is your basic mandala tool. So as you can see, you can just create your simple mandalas with this tool. So we're gonna use this in conjunction with the polar feature as well. So you wanna leave this on, you wanna leave the mirror on, and you also want the rotations to be about 12. I prefer to always use rotations that are multiples of six, um, just because six is the same amount of size as a hexagon, and it seems to go well with a lot of my pattern work. So leave the rotation effect on, and then come over to this third icon here, that is your repeat effect. So you want to enable this. And then underneath where it says orientation, you've got horizontal, vertical, and then click it again and you get polar. So you want to enable this polar feature. So the repeat rate, I've set at about 25. As you change this, you can see the higher up it goes, the less actual repeats that you get. So the lower down it goes, the busier your design will be essentially. So I'm going to set this one at about Let's do it at about 30 today. Uh, rotational curve underneath, we're not gonna mess with that one today. Um, scale stroke, I'm gonna turn that off for the time being. So you wanna enable your repeat effect, you want the orientation to polar, scale stroke off, and then the repeat rate to be, I'm gonna select about 30, but feel free to mess around with whatever you think you'd like to use. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, get up your drawing tools and come down to the paint bucket. Make sure your color is set to black. Uh, the tolerance, I'm just gonna put that all the way up to 100. And then you wanna fill in your whole page so it's black there. Then you wanna come back over to your tools and get the marker up. And I think that's about 10 for this I'm gonna use. Um, you want the color to be white. So I'm gonna focus and draw up the top part of this document here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just mark out on the cross point there and then also about halfway up along the next dotted line. So this is where I'm gonna to start to draw. So if you start off in the center and you do a kind of semicircle and then twist it a little bit and do the exact same on the next one along. So you've got something that looks a little bit like that. And then you wanna turn the page about 45 degrees and then do the exact same thing again. So Draw a couple of semicircles across and then the same again. So then if you zoom out, you see you've got your kind of flower of life, uh, geometric mandala kind of thing going on. Um, the next thing that I do, I zoom in on the middle. I like to add something in the center because I think the design looks a little bit empty at this point in the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come back up here and turn the polar effect off. You want to disable that for the time being. So we're just going to be using this rotational effect. You can keep the rotational effect at 12 for the time being. Um, keep your marker tool with the white color on. And I'm just going to come up here and just erase a couple of these little bits that I don't actually want to see in the design. Yeah, that's fine like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to black, and then just draw the edge at the center of the design, and come down and you can fill that in black, like so. And come back over, select your pen tool, change the color to white, and then, where are we, get that centered. And then from the center, you can start drawing outwards like so. 
you can obviously change the size of the pen if you want, the size of the thickness of the nib. Um, I'm just going to set this ruler up here. So if I set up a circular ruler, I'm just going to draw a line to go around there. So I've got a bit of a circle going on as well. So deselect the ruler. The next thing I'm going to do, come over to your layers on the right hand side and then select a new layer. Zoom in a little bit around the edge and today I'm going to use the airbrush tool. Uh, size, I'm going to be a bit smaller than that, about 15 or something. Uh, opacity, that's 65, 70. And I'm just going to start, oh sorry, the colour, we obviously need it to be darker. So we can do a bit of a drop shadow. And then just fill in around the edges like this so it gets a bit darker right to the edge. And come back and select your pen tool. You want the colour to be white. And then if you just go around the edges like so. Oh, sorry my mistake. Let's change that. Let's not select a white pen tool. Let's actually select the eraser. So we're just going to be erasing this layer alone. So if I come and erase the edge there, and then you zoom out, you can see that you've got the little drop shadow in the center and then the rest of the design around it. Um, that's one way of doing it using the polar tool. I'm going to show you another option. So if we open up a new document, same again, just the A4 portrait one, we're going to enable the rotation effect. I'm going to get that up to 12 rotations, exactly the same as what we've just done. The repeat effect, we want to enable that, get the polar effect on, and then select the paint bucket tool and fill the black ground in black, background in black. So what we're going to do now is in the polar uh, options, the scale stroke, we're going to have that on for this one. In the last one it was switched off so if you have this on you'll be able to then see the difference so if we just do the exact same thing again do our little guidelines and then draw your semicircle another semicircle twist it 45 degrees give you a little semicircle shapes so as you can see on this one, with the scale stroke on, what it basically does, it scales the width of the stroke down as it comes into the center. So it basically makes the whole pattern a bit more visible. It basically scales everything down into the middle. Um, now personally, I prefer to have the scale stroke off because I feel like when I'm actually tattooing, it would be a little more clear on skin, um, but it depends what you're gonna use this program for. If you're just using it for designs, or if you're using it for stencils for tattoo work. Um, so you can see the difference there. Let me just come back onto the other document that we drew. So when you have the scale stroke disabled, the stroke of the tool stays the same all the way down. So that's why as it comes more into the middle, everything starts to get smaller and smaller and disappear. Um, personally, I prefer the look of that, but then you might prefer the look of that. So you can mess around with the scale stroke on that as well. Um, and yeah, that pretty much concludes the tutorial today, guys. Um, I'm gonna try and get another one out in the next couple of days. I've been a bit lazy over the last week, got a bit of January lockdown blues, everything's been a bit dark and wet and miserable, so I've been quite lazy, but yeah, back on it now. It's been a nice day today, I've been out in the park for a walk, so blow the cobwebs out. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful, easy to follow. Um, if any of you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try my best to answer them. Also, do feel free to tag me in any designs that you do, I'd love to see them. Um, I've also set up a YouTube page where I'll be uploading all of these videos as well so just head to the link in my bio and you can click on that and then it'll take you to my YouTube page where everything's going to be categorised and ordered, it's probably just a little bit easier. You can subscribe as well so you'll get a little notification every time I upload a video. Um, yeah, that's it guys, I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next few days for another tutorial.
Take care.